Hello, I'm Tarsila Cruz, and I'm a children's book illustrator, and this is Drawing with Tarsila. We're going to draw a really cool cat today. I'm using the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, but if you don't have these tools at home, that's absolutely fine. You can use a regular page, a pencil, and an eraser. We're going to start using simple shapes. So for our cool cat, we're going to draw a circle. I'm going to get a black pencil, so it's just like a regular pencil, and I'm drawing a circle. It's more like a novel, it's not a perfect circle, and it doesn't have to be perfect. For the body, we'll be drawing a rectangle, but a vertical one. It's kind of the same width as the head. And you can see that it's very rough. So this is the first iteration of our drawing. For the legs, we're going to be using two rectangles, but this time they're gonna be thinner and longer. And this one is going to go this way. And the other one is gonna go this way, like an X. This one is actually a bit long. I'm gonna trace the line there. I'm gonna get my eraser. I'm going to erase that. This cat is a cool cat, but it doesn't look much like a cat at the moment. We're going to be drawing the arms, and these are going to be made by curves. So one curve going this way, and Another one, very much smaller, this time is almost like a backwards C. This one is going to be smaller, this side. Still doesn't look like a cat, needs ears. So for the ears, we're going to use triangles. One triangle on this side, and another triangle on that side. Notice that they're not perfect triangles, they're a little bit curvy. That's how I draw them, but you can draw them whatever shape you like. We already have the skeleton of our cat. It's going to be a cool cat walking about, wearing a leather jacket with a scarf. If you're going to be drawing this at home with a pencil and the paper, it's going to look a little bit different. If you trace this in your house very, very lightly, which is what I recommend, this is what you're going to do. You're going to uh, trace over it so we can erase it afterwards but if you're like me using the iPad what you can do is trace it really really light I just lowered the opacity of my layer so it looks like it's only very faint and then I can draw on a different layer on the top but let's suppose I drew it with pencil and I'm going to draw it on the top of my pencil work with my regular pencil I'll be tracing over the ears like so but this time I'm gonna make them a little bit stronger and make sure that they come out like real well I'll be doing both ears first now I would like this cat to wear a beret it's a cool cat I'm gonna draw a bean shape on the top of the head And if I make a mistake, like I did there, I can just get my eraser and I can go back and erase the bits that I don't want. And I can retrace over the bits that I do want. There you are. Then I'm gonna add two, two triangles inside the ears. And I have sort of the head going on. Oh. I forgot the little pointy bit at the bay ray. It almost looked like a squashed apple or pumpkin, doesn't it? I really like that. Because it is a cool catch, my say, we're missing the face. Now, one of the most important things in this particular cat's face is that it's wearing sunglasses. And here is a trick that I like when I do sunglasses. I just trace a straight line from one end to the other, like so. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just kind of an idea of a straight line. Connect the ear there, 
I'm going to imagine that these cat's eyes are around each one of these sides. It's going to be moving that way. I'm going to do a half a circle going this way, like so. Then I'm going to draw the bridge of the nose and I'm going to try to draw another half circle this way. Then I'm going to continue it and close it off. So you see, it almost looks like it's a pan with two pans or two pans one next to each other. And I'm going to raise the bits that I didn't like or that the word too much. And you can adjust it, you can erase as much as you want. For the inside of the lens, I'm going to follow the same, uh, the same width that I kind of left here and here. And I'm kind of going to keep a straight line here and another one here. Now I'm going to try to keep the same width that I have here on the sides and I'm going to do another semicircle. Now this is a bit tricky, so don't worry too much if it's not coming out exactly how you want. Everything is about practice. So if you didn't get it right, you erase it, you try again. So there you go, our cat has glasses now. Perfect. And these could be sunglasses or regular glasses. Now I'm going to add the little nose. And for the nose, I'll be drawing a little heart. Some cats have heart-shaped noses, some don't. You can make a triangle if you want, like this, or you can make a little circle. That depends on what you want. I'm going to erase these out. And I'm going to draw the little mouth. And the way that I draw the mouth is like a, the letter J. So I'll do a little mm -hmm. And then a backwards J. And I like to make it really roundy. And I'll add some dots for to meet like the whiskers. And I might actually add a couple of whiskers. Oh, I didn't like that. I erase those, but you can erase, like with the tap, but you can erase those with an eraser, of course. Now, I'm going to continue using that same line I drew very faintly before for the head. And I'm going to draw it only, and then I'll stop here. I'm not gonna go any further than that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna, so far, we have the head of our cat and we have the skeleton with a faint line underneath. I recommend using a pencil and not a pen because if you do make mistakes and you want to erase them, it's not going to be easy with a pen. Actually, it's probably going to be very unlikely, but if you do use a pencil, you can erase it and then once you're very happy with everything, then you can use your pen to trace over. So for the scarf, I'm going to draw a rectangle going diagonally. Sometimes the scarves, they overlay, so here's what I'm going to be doing. There is a um, the rectangle here for the scarf, for one bit of the scarf. So around the face there, cross over the body, and then there. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna do a little curve connecting the scarf to the end there where we meet the face very faintly and a little curve around here. So the scarf is going through and it's gonna come out over here. So a little mini rectangle on this side. And a couple of lines for a fringe there. So I'm gonna trace over like we did with the head. I'm gonna make it harder. Maybe even make it a little bit curvier because sometimes clothes are soft. They are not very hard. And I'm going to connect these. I'm going to make the dark lines darker and I'll add my little fringe there to the scarf. So I have the head with the scarf. Now some of you may be going, oh, but I can see the lines underneath. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. Don't worry. This particular cat is going to be wearing a leather jacket. And the way we're going to draw this leather jacket is around the middle of the scarf. So we're kind of like the middle of your catch. You're going to imagine a line coming down. You're going to trace a little faint line there. And before you reach the bottom of your rectangle, we were going to draw 
two very slight curves. They're not gonna be straight lines, they're like slight curves on both sides. From the middle line to the end of the rectangle. Again, if you want to erase some bits like I'm doing now, to make them look a little bit neater, that's fine too. And on that middle line, I'm going to add that middle line there, and then two lines next to it. That's going to be the zip. And then I'm just going to draw tiny, tiny lines to make it like it is. On the right side of the jacket, there will be a pocket. So this is how I'm gonna draw the pocket, just a curved line, sort of floating inside that rectangle. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, but you see that there is the hand that we put the arm, so that we're going to start that curve right there where the hand would fit inside. So at the end of that line, you start to do it. They're about the same size. You don't have to be on the same height. We're going to trace with a harder line on top of those lines that we did for the arms. And you already have an idea of the arms with the hands going inside the pockets. To complete that, we're going to draw a little curve going from here, not all the way to the top, a little bit lower. And we're going to draw a little curve that's going to be the arm on this side. And on this side, we might do the same, but really tiny, just teeny tiny. And we're going to close off the jacket going a little bit outside of the area of the rectangle just a tiny bit because jackets tend to be a little bit over our bodies anyway and the leather jacket also needs some details so I'm going to add a little rectangle here with the button because sometimes we have those on leather jackets and sometimes on the wrist as well so I'll be drawing a little line over here Two lines actually and maybe I'll go a little bit outside I'll just erase that bit right there and close it off just a little bit outside and add a button and on this side I'll do the same thing I'm going to go outside a little bit I'm going to erase and add the little button there now that already looks a lot like a leather jacket I'm going to add some lines here for the seams, like a dotted line. And on the edge of the jacket, I'm going to add just a trim. So I'm going to make another curved line that goes exactly like the same way as that one. And I'm going to add little lines of that. Oh, inside it. I'll be continuing using that line now. And I'm gonna do it a little curve, not straight. Most of our clothes are not straight anyway. And I'll be coming down so it's like a dress underneath it or a top. It depends on what you want. And again, I'm going to erase these bits here. And now we're gonna be moving down to the bottom part, so the legs and the shoes. For the legs, I always start with the leg in the front, which is this leg here, because that cat is walking that way. If we put the other leg in the front, it's going to look weird. Whenever you're drawing a character going towards a direction, you always use the leg in the front to point towards that direction where you're going. Usually that really helps in tell the story when you're drawing something. I'll be drawing the line on the bottom, I'm going to go all the way from here and touch the line there. Because our bodies are connected, so the legs are not floating, this is going to go all the way up. Then I'm going to draw another line here, but this time I won't be touching the top. I'll just stop about here, maybe where they intersect the two rectangles. Then I'm going to be drawing the one on the back which is connecting the top with that first line and then going down, following that same line that we drew before and here. And I'll stop here. The reason why I stop is because now we sort of have the trousers, but we need the shoes. 
and the shoes for this particular cat is a pair of boots. What you can do is, you can imagine that the foot is a little brick. And I'm going to draw a brick going this way, so a little brick here for the foot. I'll draw that lightly. And I'll draw the little brick going this way for the foot on the other side. It kind of an extension of that shapes we did before. And to draw the shoes, then I'm going to draw a strong line following the bottom of that brick, but extending a little bit. Be going up a little bit there, and then we're gonna come back in a diagonal line for the shoes. And then we're gonna go up. And we're gonna go up here as well. And we're gonna close it off at about here. So very close to the knee, because that's going to be a pair of boots that our cat is wearing. And we're gonna be doing the same thing on the other side. Continue the line on the bottom a little bit further. You go slightly up, back on a diagonal line, and you close off the back leg. To me, that particular cat has a very long back leg at the moment. If you think the same thing is happening to you, you can just erase it and do it again because now you know how to do it. So I'll pretend that this is the brick for the foot. I'll extend the line a little bit up, diagonal, connect, connect. Now that's a bit more proportional and I can close it off there for the boot or I can just let the boot be behind that leg, which is fine as well. I'll add details to the boots to close off thingies there. And I'm gonna add some details to the bottom of the boot as well. A little bit on the front, and then I'm going to do little squares on the bottom. Now, you might find a bit tricky to do that, like I did there. So what you can do is draw tiny squares. One, two, give it a space in between them. And then you just connect them, like so. And you can always erase them afterwards as well. Do the same thing here. I'll draw little tiny squares. up and down and you have your little boots we're gonna add some dash lines for the seams on the trousers and we have our very cool cat drawn now what we're going to do is we're going to get our eraser and we're going to erase those bits that we didn't use because I have two different layers I'm going to erase on this layer, I'm gonna make tiny, uh, my eraser kind of tiny so I can get to the bits that are a little bit harder. And what you can do is use a smaller eraser, I'll make it kind of sharp to get to those details. I'm going to be erasing the bits there that I don't need. And if I erase something that I do need, I just Draw it again. Because I told you I'm in a different layer, I'm going to pretend that I'm in that layer where I have all those lines, so my light layer, and I'm just going to erase those. You will notice that I still have some rugged lines around, so I'm just going to get my eraser in a smaller size. And again, you can use a tiny eraser if you have a home and you go through those details if you want to. And just to make sure that your lines are exactly what you want. 
If you're happy with your drawing the way it is, what you can do is you can trace over with a marker now and you make sure that the lines are sharp and clean, or you can just keep doing what I'm doing, which is refining your pencil drawing. See, there's a little bit of a thing there. I'm gonna erase it and I'm gonna draw it again. And there you have it. I'm going to add a pattern to the scarf and it's gonna be a crisscross pattern. Some people might do it straight down, but the way that I like doing is to give it a little bit of movement. So I'm gonna go diagonally and with a curve. So I'll be drawing a curve like this, very light, and another one with some space, but they're kind of the same width apart, and I kind of think about the same thing again, and go down, and go down. And it looks a bit like a candy cane if you think about it. And I'm gonna do it the other way. And now you can add extra details to make it even look a little bit more like a tartan. So two lines on the side of each one of those lines. And on the other side. Now, if you remember the first line we drew, we can make them really thick. And now it really looks like a tartan. You can also add some glare to like some reflex to the sunglasses with a few lines. That one just looks like scratches. <laughs> Make it one bigger and one smaller. Yeah. And there you have it. You have a super cool cat. And now you can color it in whatever way you want. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you a little time lapse of how I colored it and I transformed it into a greeting card. And don't forget that the greeting card is available in my Redbubble shop if you want to buy it. Also, don't forget to send me your drawing. I would love to see it. This is my email or you can send me on Instagram. You can ask for a grown-up to send it to me. I'll be so happy to see you there. Thank you so much. Bye.